people into costumes ready to go and so forth. So I'm going to start with some introductions. Um, we'd like to start with the members of the board. Uh, President Jennifer Anderson, if you would stand please. We can. And why don't we save applause and I'll get them all up. You can meet them all. Uh, Craig Frost, uh, Mary Pettit, Bob, Dr. Bob Wiegert, um, Wayne King, uh, Dr. Wiggett, you'll see later on here. <laughs> and I don't believe that Jean Parker and Troy Seeley, are they here? Okay, and that's our board. I'd like to give them a hand. I guess somebody said I should introduce myself. I'm Judy McDonough. I'm co-president of the Fairfield Education Association, along with Teresa Jewell, and we'll get her up here after a while. Um, I'd like to introduce some of the people from the media that are here, from KMCD, um, Tech 96, Mark Denny. It's around someplace, okay. <laughs> uh, from the Fairfield Ledger, Dwayne Nolan, Jay Giltner. Thank you. And from the Tumble Courier, Jean Greco. She might not be here yet. She was going to be, is she here? And would also, let's give all these people from the media a hand then, we're glad to have them with us. And I'd like to introduce a special guest you'll be meeting later on from Harper Brush, um, Barry Harper. Also, I'd like to announce that the plants on the table are available for a dollar a piece. So if you're interested, if you'd see Sally Neff. <laughs> so it's, it's okay, it needs to be closer. <laughs> okay, are we ready to go? Okay. Some of the blessed views of education are the monks of St. Bernard's and the Little Sisters of Hoboken. And it's all theirs. Catherine, we've all come here tonight to talk shop. You mean we're going to convert all these people and have them become missionaries? Amnesia. Get back to the lane. <laughs> They're teachers, just like us. Yeah, but look what they get to wear. <laughs> look what we get to wear. Oh, oh, oh. Brother, we love, we have all chosen the same path to educate children. Yeah. How about if we reach a compromise in what we're wearing? Oh, it's a wonderful idea. We'll wear what we wear, but we'll just add a little bit of the stuff there, Raymond. Right? Accessorize. I only say accessorize. <laughs> 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 now, isn't this a beautiful spring day? Yes, it is, Reverend Mother. I'm so glad that winter is over. You know, it was really cold this past winter. In fact, it was so cold that... Our snowman begged, to, begged us to let him into the monastery. <laughs> Even the world leaders couldn't get into a heated argument. When I made to cake and put it out to cool, an hour later it was frosted. <laughs> the ultra boys had to jump stock to kill. 
we had to open the refrigerator to heat the house. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was so cold that my false teeth chattered. And I wasn't worried. <laughs> well, some of you may recognize this. The, the brothers here were trying to raise money a few months ago to save their monastery. And thanks to my miracle, oh, here we go. You see, I once was completely new. But then I was granted the power of speech. And, and he's, he's been, been chattering, chattering away, away ever, ever since. since. <laughs> monkey business, monkey shines. Monkey in the middle, give that brother boy the fiddle and a few bit of the cold eyes. Ever since those middle ages, all we've got in this flack. Now we're out of our monkey cages and giving sackcloth the sack and that means monkey business. Monkey shine. Is it sinful to be grinful? Brother, I feel fine. Oh, monkey business. That funky business. Monkey business, your too much of that. We don't want it to go to their heads, you know. Here we go. Now, we sisters, we sisters were raising money to bury five of our own who died from botulism when eating some bad vichy <clears throat> Some folks think of convents as the places where we pray, but let us tell you convents are much more than that today. We're dedicated people, but we like to For me, let us tell you why. When a sister gets applause, it's a special high. There is nothing we can do once we get a laugh or two. There's something we cannot control once we're on a roll. Have you heard those what about the traveling salesman who really drew a crowd? It seems this farmer had a horse spread a wild and down. Sister, nonsense may be habit for me, but let's draw the line. Cut the cheap shots, why be common? Everybody's here, so let's tell them who we are. This is Sister Robert, and she sings and drives a car. Sister Mary, she doesn't know her real name. A cruiser face fell on her head, her memory's gone. What a shame. Sister Catherine is our novice mistress at our Yes. 
today, and we must follow these rules. I haven't. <laughs> well, Clarence, you're working on redemption now. You write on the board. I break the vows ten times. I will not break vows. I will not break vows. Just as many of you I here have had other teaching jobs in other schools, and we have all come from a variety of parishes. And we've all done work in a redneck church. Believe me, you would know if you're in a church like that. You, you might be in a redneck red church if yeah. the call to worship is y'all come on in. And the doors are never locked. People grumble about no one letting those coyotes on the ark. <laughs> the preacher says, I'd like to ask Bubba to help take up the offering. <laughs> and five guys stand up. <laughs> the restroom is outside. <laughs> And opening day to deer hunting season is recognized as an official church holiday. <laughs> One of the members requests to be buried in his four-wheel drive truck because I ain't never been in a hole. It couldn't get me out of that. <laughs> and in the annual stewardship drive, there is at least one pledge of two calves. <laughs> Never in its entire 100-year history has one of its priests had to buy meat or vegetables. When it rains, everybody's smiling. Prayers regarding the weather are a standard part of every worship service. A singing group is known as the OK Crowd. <laughs> and with work, the church directory doesn't have last names. The priests wear boots. Four generations of one family sit together and worship every Sunday. The only time people lock their cars in the parking lot is during the summer. And that and they only do that so their neighbors can't leave them a bag of zucchini. <laughs> and there is no such thing as a secret sin. <laughs> There's a special fundraiser for a new septic tank. <laughs> Finding and returning lost sheep is not just a parable. <laughs> you miss worship one Sunday morning, and by 2 o'clock that afternoon, you've had a dozen inquiries worried about your health. <laughs> High notes on the organ set dogs in the parking lot to hell. And people wonder when Jesus fed the 5,000 whether the two fish were bass or catfish. <laughs> it's not heaven, but if you can see heaven, from there. The, the final, final words of the benediction are, Y'all come on back now, you dear. <laughs> now, brothers, sisters, please, let's get back to our focus, education. Yes, yes and according to Madeline Hunter, we should have begun with an anticipatory set. <laughs> so, with that in mind, um, who has seen a movie or read a book about a teacher or about education? Okay. Yes, 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 Sister Amnesia. The king and I am to serve with love. Brotherly love. Mr. Holland's opus. <laughs> yes. Faust and Lolita. <laughs> of animal house and up the down staircase. Dead Poets Society and the prime of Miss Jean Brody. And I just love Julie Andrews and the sound of music. Aww. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. When you count, you begin with one, two, three. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. ABC Catholic style. A for abstinence. It's what we do. B for baptism. Our first sacrament. C for Catholic. We've got a charm. D for don't. It gives us guilt. E for evolution. Just ain't true. F for faith. It always gets us through. G for faith. What children are. Where we all begin. Oh, oh wonderful, wonderful. 
Well, hey, I got a great idea. Let's take time to tell everybody what we teach. I teach, what else? Public speaking. For example, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Brother Four King. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this Brother Four King. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Thank you. Thank you. Well, since this is my first teaching job, as a student, I got sm caught smoking, smoking in the boys' room, <laughs> and cutting classes. We don't need no education. We don't need no thought control. Brother class, brother class. Rejection. Rejection. <laughs> children. from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Please use the back door. <laughs> For those of you who have children and don't know it, we have a nursery downstairs. <laughs> oh, and the priest will preach his farewell message, after which the choir will sing, Break Forth into Joy. <laughs> During the absence of our priest, we enjoyed the rare privilege of hearing a good sermon when J.S. Dove supplied our pulpit. Due to the rector's illness, Wednesday's healing services will be discontinued until further notice. <laughs> the eighth graders will present Shakespeare's Hamlet in the church basement on Friday at 7 p.m. The congregation is invited to attend this tragedy. <laughs> Today's homily. How much can a man drink with hymns from a full choir? <laughs> Don't let worry kill you off. Let the church help. <laughs> and, and the priest is on vacation. Massages can be given to the very secretary. <laughs> Eight new choir rooms are currently needed due to the addition 
of several new members and to the deterioration of some older ones. <laughs> Weight Watchers meets at 7 p.m. Please use the large double doors on the side. I think that's enough. Let's, let's get back to education. You know, besides public speaking, my friend David and I have had fun entertaining the elementary kids. You know what? So is Sister Marionette and I. And I found that the children really like to get into my great jokes and stories. Yeah. Me too. Hey, let's see what kind of a sense of humor these guys have. Okay. What kind of furniture polish do skulls use? Pledge of Allegiance. Let's get back. We're talking about education here. Okay? Now, everyone in the room, please, put your hand up if you have schoolwork to do this weekend. Well, yes, yes, it's true that teachers always have a mountain of papers to grade, and some occupational hazards include sore backs, sore feet, and eye strain. Well, and there never could be any time to pee. <laughs> For example, did you know that Noah's wife was the Joan of Arc? <laughs> did you know that? Bob's you wife that, didn't you? was a pillar of salt by day and a ball of fire by night. When Moses went to get the Ten Commandments, 
He went to the top of Mount Sinai. That's good to me. <laughs> Joshua led the Hebrews in the Battle of Jericho. <laughs> in seven veils in front of King Herod. <laughs> Paul preached acrimony, which is another name for marriage. David fought the fecal sky over a race of people in biblical. <laughs> and a Christian, a Christian should have only one wife. This is called monotony. <laughs> I think we're getting sidetracked again. <laughs> really, we have to ask ourselves, we're in this field of education, why do we teach? Okay, I don't know whether I want to do this or not, but go ahead. June, July, and August. No. <laughs> yes. I got two. One is the opportunity to teach summer school. Oh. <laughs> and the other one is a class we got to take called Dementia of Learning. <laughs> We teach in order to touch the future. And we pray for children. Who sneak popsicles before supper? Who erase holes in math workbooks. Who can never find their shoes. And we pray for those who stare at photographers from behind barbed wires. Who can't bound down the street with a new pair of sneakers. Who never pound a potato. Who are born in places we wouldn't be caught dead. Who never go to the surface. Who live in an X-rated world. We pray for children. Who bring us sticky kisses and fistfuls of dandelions. Who hug us in a hurry and forget their lunch money. And we pray for those who never get dessert. Who have no safe blankets to drag behind them. Who can't find any rooms to clean up. Whose pictures aren't on anybody's dresser. Whose monsters are reading. We pray for children who spend all their allowance before Tuesday. Who throw tantrums in the grocery store and pick at their food. Who like ghost stories. 
who shove dirty clothes under the bed and never rinse out the tub. <clears throat> who get visits from the tooth fairy. Who don't like to be kissed in front of the carpool. Who squirm in church and temple and scream in the phone. <clears throat> Whose tears we sometimes laugh, sometimes laugh at and whose smiles make us cry. <clears throat> and we pray for those whose nightmares come in the daytime. Who will eat anything. Who have never seen a dentist who aren't spoiled by anybody. Who go to bed hungry and cry themselves to sleep. Who live and move but have no being. We pray for children who want to be carried. And for those who must. <laughs> for those we never give up on. For those who don't get a second chance. For those we smother. And for those who will grab the hand if anybody kind enough to walk with Help us offer our hands to them so that no child is left behind because we did not act. While they're recovering, um, we're going to introduce some of our retiring faculty, and I'll ask um, that our superintendent, Dr. John Kelly, come up. He has some presentations to make, and I think I'll do mine at the same time because knowing this group, there's more to come, and they'll probably have you retirees possibly up here again. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Well, experts say you, still, you should start off with a joke, but experts haven't heard me tell jokes. But after this, I'm going to reconsider for next year. <laughs> On behalf of the uh, school board, uh, we want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the following people for all the years that they've given to the uh, young people of our community and to the Fairfield Community School District. I'd like to start by asking uh, Marilyn McGuire to uh, come forward. Marilyn has been a cook for 14 years uh, in the district. She was cook at the junior high, middle school, and later became head cook at Lockbridge Elementary. Before that, she was a cook for the district for 15 years. So we want to thank you for all your years of service. Thank you very thank much. You. Peggy Parcell. Peggy's been a teacher associate at the Lockridge Elementary Building for 16 years. And she's seen a lot of changes out there, I'm sure. So. 
Thank you very much. Norma Manley. Norma has been a uh, cook at Pence for uh, 24 years. I've been trying to talk her out of it. I, I don't think she should quit yet, but uh, <laughs> she's also my neighbor. So she's yeah. got <laughs> Kay Brewer. I don't think this is fair because I know she's not going to quit. She's not retiring, really. <laughs> But uh, 30 years of, of teaching language arts at the junior high and middle school. Kay graduated from Roosevelt High School in Des Moines, then on, went on to the University of Iowa, where she graduated with a BA in English in 1964. She received an MA from the University of Iowa in 1984. She's also spent a lot of time on the junior high oracle. Thank you very much, Kay. from uh, the FCEA. Uh, she's been a good member and we also have a little presentation recognition from the Iowa State Education Association for her years in education. So thank you very much, Kay. Jim Hafner. 30 years. You and Kay must start at the same time, is that right? 30 years of teaching, I said you and Kay started at the same time? That's right. <laughs> at the uh, middle school instrumental. Jim graduated from LM Community School in Letts, Iowa. Is Letts right. is still there? Still on there. Okay. <laughs> he went to the University of Iowa and graduated with a uh, BA in music in 1965. He received his MA from Truman State University in 1973. Thank you very much. We recognize him for, for the FCEA and the Iowa State Education Association, and they told me he was a gardener, so we have some plants for him. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Kay, I have yours too. I'm not fast enough here. John's moving me too fast. Thanks. <laughs> here. Don Kramer. Here's Don. 41 years of teaching junior high <coughs> school art, middle school art at, in this district. Don graduated from Burlington High School, went to Burlington College, Burlington, it's still, that's not right anymore. <coughs> not yet. <laughs> and, uh, and you and I, where he received a BA in 1956 with a major in art and a minor in industrial arts, which I didn't know that, or I'd have found another <laughs> job for you. <laughs> He was in the armed services, but received an early release to begin teaching in Fairfield in 1958. Mr. Kramer received an MA from Drake University in 1964. Don has been honored as an outstanding top-notch art educator, both at the state and national level. 41 years, Don. always years with um, FCEA and the Iowa State Education Association and I just thought a good book of cartoons about teachers might do for Don so <laughs> have fun Don. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Rosalie Thompson. 28 and a half years of teaching junior high and middle school science here. She's been the middle school science department head for 11 years. Rosalie graduated from Mount Pleasant High School and received a BS degree from Iowa Wesleyan in Mount Pleasant in 1960. She's been very active in environmental issues and helped further conservation and environmental work through her teaching of youth and adults alike. 28 and a half years. Thank you very much, Rosalie. Thank you. Quite a while. I've known Rosalie a long time. I graduated from my Wesleyan also. Same here. 
And I'd like to present her again with the recognition from SCEA and from uh, the Iowa State Education Association and a little gift to thank you for all those years. Thank you. Got to find my book. Okay, my well, you're looking. My oh. notebook. Oh, I don't know. I'll tell you what. I'll do something oh, else while you look for your book. I can't do it without my notebook. I, I think they may notes. it maybe went that way. In the meantime, I'll cover for her. You know, she said we could wing it. We're we're winging it because I've <coughs> messed up here. I didn't get Peggy's and Marilyn's and get your certificates to you, so we'll get those. Also, Teresa Jewell, our co-president, if she'd like to come up, I have a little something for her to thank her for her years. I'm still mad at her. <laughs> but she's going to uh, University of Northern Iowa next year to work on her master's degree as a graduate assistant. So we have a little something for her to thank her. Is Brian Horn here? So I'm mad at him too because he was going to be co-president and then he left to go to Madden. So, you know, anybody want to be co-president? I'm open for suggestions right now. So thank you very much for helping me. No, oh my gosh. I got a card someplace. Well, thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Do you have anything else? I would just like to recognize some other people, and I don't know whether they're here or not, but we do have little certificates, but other people who are leaving that have been of service uh, for a few years anyway. Uh, Richard Burke, see here? Okay, good. Uh, Janina Follett. Amanda Hunter. Denise Lichty. Some of these are teachers. We have them, uh, aides, um, you know, bus drivers, so forth. Deb Curran. Veronica, that's good. Oh, my thought I saw her someplace. <laughs> Have a little certificate of thank you for the time you've spent here with us. And I know Chad Volmeck, he's not here. He the notes that he something else. Uh, Jerry Peniston. Sandra Lovell, she said she had to work tonight. Okay, I think that takes her home. Did you find your book? Yes. Okay, we're back on the road. If you've ever been on a play crew with Scott, you know how efficient he is about cleaning up afterwards? He took my book. <laughs> now the retirement things that John and Judy did are all well and good. But I think we can do a little more. That's my job. Peggy Parcell, would you come here, please? <clears throat> now, I'm going to preface what I say is that it wasn't my idea what's going to happen. I've been hearing this all night. <laughs> They've been warning you? Yes. Oh. No, not really. <laughs> Just saying it wasn't my idea. Okay. Well, then whose idea was it? It wasn't mine. Okay. <clears throat> well, as John said, she's been with the district for 20 or for 18 years, both subbing and as an associate. Two years, she taught at a country school in Washington County. She was asked what significant changes she's noticed since she first began in education. And she noticed that there are lots of changes in methods of disciplining, which I think we all would agree with. And since she does a lot of work in the computer room, she's noticed that we've gone from all math drill to other areas, and a lot of us can relate to that too. What she'd like to do in the future is to catch up on some housework, and I think, again, a lot of us can relate to that. And she plans to do some camping and some traveling. She has an embarrassing moment that she shared with us. She said that she fell in the lunchroom when she slipped on some bean juice and just went splat, just sprawled. And she does recommend this piece of advice. Never try to reason with an unreasonable child. <laughs> now, Peggy, you said that was your most embarrassing moment, right? Oh, you have a picture. <laughs> Who told? 
Well, I don't know if it was embarrassing for you, but the teachers think it's really good. Now, let's see if I can get this out of here. And this is a special gift from your friends at Lockridge. Oh, bless their hearts. <laughs> it seems I was told you went on a field trip with the first graders. That's right. And they were tapping trees. That's right. And you uh, kind of like to sample the maple syrup before it's actually maple syrup, right? I think somebody asked me to do that. <laughs> and you fell for it? <laughs> Therese, that was her name. Oh, that explains it, okay. Well, here is a picture. <laughs> syrup without doing it the hard way. Right. So they bought you something. <laughs> Marilyn McGuire, please. Marilyn has been working, or she started, what do you say here? I subbed for 15 years, back, starting back in 1965, and she took five years off while her youngest child was still small, and she subbed again in the Fairfield schools, except in Lockridge and Libertyville, and lo and behold, she ends up as the head cook at Lockridge. She's also served as a sub-secretary at Pleasant Plains School, a day or so when they couldn't find anybody else. <laughs> The biggest changes she has noticed have been the school breakfasts and computers. Her plans for the future? She wants to do something she wants to do. <laughs> and maybe a little traveling, some quilting, and some gardening. Now, it's interesting that your memorable moment happens to fit in with the gift that your staff friends gave me to give you. <laughs> uh, it seems that, really, well, she should get a medal because she poured some hot bean juice or something really hot liquid on her foot one day at school. She went ahead, fixed lunch, she served it, and nobody knew until the paramedics came later that she had a second degree burn on her foot. Third degree. What? Third degree. Third degree. Well, they wrote second. That's even worse. Ooh. Well, anyway, she missed a month of school just because she finished out her day at work that day. Now, we know you're planning on retiring. And just in case you have a burn, again, we want something handy for you. Again, this is somebody else's idea. Just call me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know Norma's been scared to death all day because she knows I'm going to do this. Norma! Be brave. I think Norma's been at Pence as long as I have, just about. I think I've been there a couple years longer than she has, so I've known Norma for a long time. And I tell you what, I don't know how I'm going to get along next year with school lunches because she knows what not to put on my tray. <laughs> Anyway, she served 24, 23 years at Pants and one year at the junior high. She has plans for the future that she plans on traveling and working in her flower gardens, and those of us who know her know she really loves her gardening. And she really wants to spend more time with her grandchildren. Her wor wise words of wisdom, retire as soon as you can because life is short. <laughs> now, I have two things I wanna share. One, I have a special gift for you. Those of us who know Norma well, know that she loves to tell jokes. If you need a joke, you go to Norma. So I've prepared a joke book for Norma. 
and it's called Norma's Book of Jokes for Public Use. <laughs> Norma, I'm gonna see if I can find one in here. All right. It's blank! <laughs> memorable moment I think is very touching and I want to continue this both for Norma and Marilyn. For Norma one of her most memorable moments was when a small boy went through the lunch line and said to her you're such a good cook you should be cooking for God. <laughs> but she did think to herself I hope it's a while before I do. <laughs> Now, Marilyn, do you want to come? I should have had you stay up. Can you come back up here a minute? I know, Norma, that I'm going to share something that is something that is a very favorite thing for you. And I really think it fits both of our cooks because they touch a lot of lives, particularly in the breakfast line. They visit and they talk with these kids. Some of these kids, you don't have anybody else to talk to them. So I'm going to share this poem that I've been told is a very favorite. I fed a hungry child today. His face was none too clean, but two bright eyes smiled up at me as teeth had gaps between. He took his cup and marched along without a second look, and he said, I like the lunch today because you're the goodest cook. Later, as I did my work of cleaning pots and dishes, I recalled how a multitude was fed with two loaves and two fishes. My work took on a new meaning, one it never had before, while little minds need filling, sometimes bodies need it more. Oh, my work is mediocre. My failures fill a book. But it, re it really lifts my spirits to know that I'm the goodest cook. <laughs> she'll put on my tray tomorrow or Monday. <laughs> Rosalie. As John mentioned, Rosalie's been at the Fairfield Junior High slash middle school for 28 and a half years. And she, her first year, she was a tutor for all subjects, had lunch duty for an hour. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Significant changes that she's noticed has been that family life seems to be shortchanged because everyone is so busy with all the different activities that they're involved in. Stress level on students, families, schools, and personnel seem to keep increasing. Her plans for the future? We won't be without Rosalie in the environmental workshop. She still plans to do those in conjunction with the University of Northern Iowa. New theme concerns would be climate change and agriculture and she wants to work on updating her genealogical family records and print some for the relatives. She also wants to have more time to enjoy their grandchildren or her grandchildren and go to the sporting events and school events. Wise words of wisdom, she wants to enjoy life and see her husband and family more. I guess that's really part of her future plans. And her wise words of wisdom, I have to turn to the back because she has some words of wisdom from a song by Doug Woods, who's an environmental singer. We're living on a little green speck on a little blue ball in a big black sky all alone. And we've got to take care of that little blue ball because you know it's the only home we'll ever own. I think that really epitomizes Rosalie's thoughts towards the environment. Now, what I think is interesting, her most embarrassing moment happens to fit what a former student of hers made for a gift that we just know she has to have. Her most memorable moments involved the plastic milk jug caper. How many of you remember that? <laughs> yes, yes. I do. <laughs> uh, well, they started this project very innocently to make students and families aware of recycling. That was back when we were just getting started on recycling. And they ended up with the entire school doing something very interdisciplinary and a semi-load of shredded plastic, which they shredded themselves, first with a tree shredder, and then an old-fashioned corn sheller. Now, if any of you were around, you saw that inner part of the middle school just loaded with milk cartons. Well, Rosalie, you've got some, I've got some here you just have to have. Yes. Just a moment. I've got to get it pulled out here. Sounds like milk jugs to me. 
Now, we think this should hang on the wall. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> not even shredded. Well, that, that's for, well, you can take them off and recycle them this way. Water oh, your plants or whatever. <laughs> and, and it works better if you flatten them against the wall. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Mr. Hafner. <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all right. 34 years. 30 at Fairfield, 2 at Milford, and 2 at Preston. He's noticed the development of AEA districts, the adoption of all the different special education categories, the relatively large amount of money spent on computer equipment and software. In the future, he wants to spend, spend more time on house building and remodeling and furniture building, hobbies that I didn't know that you did. So I'm, I'm learning when I read these things. One of his most memorable moments really is not just one moment. It's the fact that he has shared many pleasant musical moments with many students, ranging all the way from those who struggled with musical skills to those who were truly very outstanding in their grade level. Wise words of wisdom? Well, as difficult as it may be, keep finding good and true things to say about each student. Don't mistake the development of skills in gathering and processing great amounts of information with the development of knowledge. Now, Jim, you mentioned that you plan to spend time on your house building and remodeling and furniture building. I don't know what kind of tools you have, but I have some extras for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don. <laughs> this may date both of us, but when I moved into the middle school from a one-room school, he was my art teacher. And I still have the piece of work. See, in country school, all we had was basically construction paper, glue, crayon, scissors. I go into the seventh grade art and I go, wow! I still have the piece of watercolor that I did that you gave me an A on. It was wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. He spent nine years in elementary art, 32 years in junior high middle school art. He's done four years of elementary summer school art and five years in summer school and evening courses for Parsons College. What he's noticed change since he started in education is there more paperwork, the use of computers, and less support from parents on discipline. He plans to teach part-time at Iowa Wesleyan and having time to do his own artwork. His wise words of wisdom, love the occupation you go into, any job, no matter what, has its ups and downs. Now, his embarrassing, well, I don't know if it's embarrassing or not, memorable moment involves Mr. Henry. <laughs> it seems that a couple of years ago, he was getting ready for the middle school art show, and you know, they need all the wall space they can get, including Mr. Henry's door. <laughs> well, if you know Gary, if you've been around over there, he puts posters on his doors, and those posters are sacred, right? Okay. Well... Don, not knowing any better, asked Gary if he could take the poster off his door, and Gary said no. <laughs> well, Don's used to Gary kidding around, and he didn't take him seriously. <laughs> he took the poster off the door and found out Gary was not kidding. <laughs> I guess he even got a little hot. <laughs> anyway, Don says he got over it. So. <laughs> Now, Don, I have reliable sources that tell me you're very good at recycling, too. <laughs> that you recycle plastic grocery sacks for your lunch. Is that right, or is it paper bags? Which? Paper bags. Paper bags. <laughs> well, you have some colleagues who think you need something. <laughs> Brewer. It's not alphabetical order. The alphabet 
is a mixed stuff. Yes, it is. It is. That's all right. Makes you on your toes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, you have taught 32 and a half years all in junior high, middle school. This girl needs a medal. What do you think? Uh, she taught in Rialto, California, and she did some subbing in Fairfield and Evans Junior High. You worked there full-time, didn't you? Or half-time in Atoma at the Evans Junior High. And then since 1967, she's been part of the junior high, middle school staff. She's noticed that demands upon teachers have increased, that outside regular classroom time Outside of your regular classroom, there's less time to plan, to organize, to innovate, to dream, and create. And we don't have a lot of time to do that. Her plans for the future, listen to this, she's going to be half-time director of the Learning Center at Iowa Wesleyan College. She's also going to be a professor of education, will teach two reading classes, and maybe supervise student teachers. I think that's cool. <laughs> Wise words of wisdom. Middle school age students are precious. They need and deserve love and concern of middle school teachers. Every teacher selects the age group best for him or her, and what joys I've had with this special group, teachers and kids. Her most embarrassing moment, I think, is a district-wide known story. <laughs> I had several people tell me this is what I should embarrass her with. I didn't have to. She wrote it down. <laughs> I know her as an avid Iowa Reading Association member, and she has presented at several regional meetings, state and regional meetings, and one year, I don't know, what, what year was that? Oh, I don't know. Oh, well, she's trying to forget. Anyway, she went to Minneapolis to make a presentation at the regional, okay? She got there and found out it was the wrong weekend. <laughs> But thank goodness she was a week early. <laughs> and fortunately, Mr. Gilpin understood and let her go back the next week. <laughs> now, I have something to help her, because we sure don't want this to happen when she starts her new job at Iowa Wesleyan, right? Your very own personal day oh. planner. <laughs> sitting here thinking, well, there aren't any more. But, oh, I've got one more. And I w I'm prefacing this. I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> I have a final presentation to make to one of our colleagues, a well-respected colleague. And the purpose of this presentation is to find a way to help this person with memory problems. It seems that a spatial activity, hmm, I hope he's still here. He didn't leave, did he? Look around, is he here? Oh, this would be terrible if he wasn't here. We'll just embarrass, well, is he? Okay, well if he's not, we'll holler for him. Okay, I'll keep talking. Uh, it seems that he was responsible for planning a special activity in his building at Lockridge School <laughs> called Pastries for parents. Now some of you may not have heard this story. It seems that somebody who shall rename, remain nameless, for a moment anyway, was responsible. He said, I'll bring the pastry. So the parents were invited, 7.30 a.m., room full of parents, no pastries. 30 minutes or so later, this esteemed colleague showed up with the pastries. Some parents had already left, and I guess he was just mortified. He got up, red-faced, pastries in hand, and said, please, the good Christians that you are, please, please forgive me. You know. Well, they may have forgiven you, but I'm not sure your staff has. <laughs> in fact, I've been asked to make a special presentation to Joe Carr. Joe, would you come here, please? <laughs> I remember. 
memory and I had nothing to do with this. Yeah, okay. right. No, I didn't. I know it was, know it was responsible. <laughs> Well, anyway, the inscription says, Pastries for Parents Party Pooper. <laughs> Lockridge Elementary, 1999. Now, they expect you to hang this on the wall, so you'll never forget to do this again. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Now, Judy, is it you that's going to talk about the Friend of Education? Okay. Uh, every year we present uh, a Friend of Education Award to we have a lot of volunteers that work in the schools from the elementary all the way through high school. These people give us a lot of their time. They're volunteers, they, they come you know, and help teachers do anything that, they need to, that needs to be done. So we just would like at least once a year to give special awards to one or two of these people who have really worked hard and we'd like to bring them all up here, but my lens, you'd be surprised how many volunteers there are in the Fairfield District. So um, just these people give their spare time, they make our job a lot easier and there are lots of things that need to be done that we'd like to do but just not enough arms and legs to do everything. So it really helps to have and we really appreciate these people coming in. So I think Sandy, Sandy Gillespie is going to make our presentation this year for our 1999 Friend of Education Award. Oh, okay, and Jane <laughs> Well, tonight we want to recognize Lee and Andrew Edlin, who started the Washington PTG Group and have worked hard to make parents a part, an important part of our school. Their leadership in, has benefited all the students at our school. Lee has done such varied things as planned and decorated a float for Kids Day. She created a um, an inviting and fun reading area for Read a Million Minutes and one time Lee turned a refrigerator box cave into a refrigerator box Santa's workshop in just two hours. <laughs> <laughs> she has set up classroom parent volunteers who have helped the teachers and Lee often would just stop by the school and listen to children read. Andrew, her husband, is well known for his Winston Churchill portrayal and Andrew served as their first president of the parent-teacher group. Okay. Lee and Andrew have been in charge of the money-making projects that have enriched our school curriculum. The PTG group sponsored Poetry Alive last year, um, yeah, which gave all the children in the school a chance to work with actors as well as poets. And this year, our PTG brought Jacqueline Briggs Martin to Washington School, and her book, Snowflake Bentley, which you all should read, received the Caldecott Award this year. And it was the day after she found out she received it that we had it at school. But they made this, this all happen. Also, um, we believe that they just kind of encourage everybody in all, as in all aspects of the field of education. So, Lee and Andrew. Would you come up, please? You know, I don't think we said they have two children, did we? Did we? Okay, um, Holly in seventh grade, and Zachary, who happens to be in my room this year, and he's wonderful. <laughs> well, this must have really impressed our daughter because she saw it this afternoon, and she told me she saw it, and she said, it was this big, Mom. <laughs> so it impressed the heck out of her, and Zach was pleased, too. I want to say thank you for the people who wrote letters and, and who are responsible for us getting this award. I'm really, really touched. Um, anybody who's had my kids know how I 
has seen me cry because whether I'm really happy or upset about something they've done, um, our kids really uh, are the most important thing. And in addition to our kids, all the other kids, and it's been a real joy um, volunteering. And I just want to say a little story. Towards the end of our first year of our parent-teacher group, we arranged to have a luncheon um, for the class parents that we'd arranged for all the teachers. And the teachers and a few of the class parents who had volunteered at the beginning of the year, written their name down, said, this is the first time I've been asked to come to the school for anything, you know, in, in their volunteer capacity. So um, we asked some of the teachers to get up and say what their experience had been, because it was new, the volunteers. And they said, we loved it. They did all this, these things for us, which really helped. Um, and that's sort of our mission statement, is to help the teachers so that they can help the kids and to get more volunteers and they're helping the kids. And then spontaneously, the parents, or the class parents, put their hands up and say, we want to say what our experience was. We have loved it. It has been a joy being in the classroom. We have gotten so much out of it, not only just knowing where our child is at at school, but helping the teachers and helping the other kids. It's given us such a great, great feeling and we've really enjoyed it. And and. So there's so much that's been given back to us when we volunteer. And there's a um, poster over in the high school, and I hope I get it, the first part right, but it's the last part that's important. If you want to be happy for an hour, watch TV. If you want to be happy for a day, go to an amusement park. And if you want to be happy for a lifetime, volunteer. So that's what I want to say. <laughs> Those of you who don't know me about now will probably realize I was not born in this country. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, I was born and raised in England. And when I came to this country and to Iowa and my kids started going to school, the American school system was just a little bit of a mystery to me. I think I thought a grade school was probably a school on a hill when I first came here. <laughs> But uh, my schools were very uh, typically English, rather eccentric, and mostly manned by uh, rather terrifying people. It's interesting to contrast my uh, uh, art teacher, a terrifying man by the name of Mr. Beards, as unlike Mr. Kramer as I can imagine. He used to limp into the room with his uh, our work under his arm, which he'd marked, and we'd be terrified to know what he'd marked it and he'd glare at us from uh, beneath his huge mustache and beard and his glasses all askew. We'd have to be standing up waiting for him. And then eventually he would croak at us, all right, sit. <laughs> so I was largely terrified of most of my teachers for one reason or another, although they managed to combine being terrifying with being very good teachers, which gives you a rather warped view of education. <laughs> <laughs> so, my first experience of uh, Washington School was that I must have died and gone to heaven because the teachers were friendly <laughs> and they seemed to actually like the students, <laughs> both of which was quite extraordinary to me. So it really wasn't too much of a strain to uh, uh, when we were effectively invited to volunteer to uh, start a PTG by Bill Bros. He is actually responsible for this. Saying, who would like to volunteer? How about you? <laughs> and that's what started it. Um, it wasn't difficult to do because uh, it was helping something which uh, we've come to treasure very much. And uh, the education in Iowa is, is nationally renowned, as you all know. and. It wasn't long before certainly I realized why and that the American school system, although very different from the British, certainly has a great deal to recommend it. Certainly if my parents came to school, I assumed somebody had died. <laughs> so uh, the level of interaction between uh, the, the school and the parents here is, is quite wonderful. And I do thank you very much for this award. It, it recognizes not only us, but the whole concept of volunteering in schools. And I suppose my word of wisdom to pass on is, even if you know how to do something very well, never be afraid to delegate. <laughs> Thank you.
Barry Harper is here to present our Teacher of the Year Award. It's always good to look forward to this evening. Uh, I am Barry Harper. I'm the CEO of Harper Brush. Um, I'm standing in for Jeff Harris, uh, who made this presentation last year. Uh, how many of you were here last year when Jeff made the presentation? Uh, well, Jeff's um, joke telling has earned him a worldwide reputation. Uh, he goes on the internet every day and picks up as many jokes as he can find, and then starts trying them out on people in our office. Unfortunately, I got a series of riddles off the internet last week, and I'm gonna try them out on you tonight. I'm not going to take uh, Dr. Kelly's uh, advice and uh, not experiment. So here goes. Uh, some of these riddles you may even be able to take home and uh, share with your five-year-old, but most likely you won't be able to share them. <laughs> it's just one riddle, and the riddle is, why did the chicken cross the road? We've all heard that riddle, I think. Well, I've got the answers that some of the famous people of the world have given. Um, Colonel Sanders? He said, I missed one. Uh, the LA Police Department, their answer was, give us five minutes with the chicken and we'll find out why he crossed the road. Uh, presidential candidate, uh, Pat Buchanan, his answer is, the chicken crossed the road to steal a job from a decent, hardworking American. Former President Nixon, his answer was, the chicken did not cross the road. I repeat, the chicken did not cross the road. I don't know any chickens. I have never known any chickens. Those of us who are grandfathers, uh, our answer goes something like this. In my day, we didn't ask why the chicken crossed the road. Someone told us the chicken crossed the road, and that was good enough for us. Former President Ronald Reagan, his answer is, what chicken? Uh, this one you may be able to share with your five-year-old. Uh, Dr. Seuss, his answer, did the, Chris, did the chicken cross the road? Did it cross it with a toad? Yes, the chicken crossed the road, but why it crossed it, I've not been told. <laughs> Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise, to boldly go where no chicken has gone before. Einstein's answer was, did the chicken really cross the road or did the road move beneath the chicken? <laughs> and finally, uh, Freud's answer to this great question, the fact that you are at all concerned that chicken cross the road reveals your underlying sexual insecurity. <laughs> I want to thank the Fairfield Community Education Association for inviting me again to participate in your annual year in recognition night. Um, I was born and raised in Fairfield. I was very fortunate. I got to attend school here, K through 12. Uh, I had a lot of great teachers. I only wish that they were still teaching in the school system so that I could write a letter nominating them. Uh, the Harper Brush Charitable Foundation is pleased to give this award for the 18th consecutive year. For a quick trip down memory lane, I would like to give recognition to the past winners. Uh, those of you who have been in the district over the years, I'm sure have to admit that uh, the selections made in the past have been uh, of the highest quality. Uh, the first uh, award winner was given in 1982, I think, to uh, Mary Pettit. Uh, Mary was my senior English teacher. Uh, she won the award 20 years after I graduated from high school. Other winners, uh, that followed were Mar Marvin uh, Scepter, Martha Flinchbaugh, Vic Rail, Eleanor Skaggs, Kay Brewer, uh, Jerry Kunkel, Keith Wells, Rosalind Cochran, Ron Prill, who graced the stage, Sharon Leach, uh, Jane Dooley was the first award winner that I got to present the award to, and that was a very special moment. Uh, Kurt Hansen, Jane Rowe, Bev Lemansky, uh, Scott Schlechta, and last year's winner, Sig Moore. Uh, would you all please stand and let's give them a round of applause. Uh, 
Uh, Superintendent Kelly described this year's selection as another tough assignment. Uh, the committee of Dr. Kelly, uh, Miss Lillian Theta, who was my uh, junior high, as we called it back then, uh, principal, and uh, Mr. Dwayne Dooley uh, are the committee members. They had to read over 80 letters in the selection process. Each year when I get to read the letters from uh, the nominating the winner that come from former and current students, uh, fellow teachers, parents, and community leaders, I really marvel at the continued high quality of faculty that Fairfield has. Uh, each of you helps to uh, continue to raise that standard for quality education, and it seems like every year the standard for Teacher of the Award continues to increase, and I think the district should be really proud of that. Uh, as I traditionally do, I like to pull uh, little quips out of the letters from the nominee. I like to read some of the comments. Uh, some of the uh, comments from the student letters this year said that this year's winner makes the student feel really important. This teacher makes the classroom fun. This teacher has a great sense of humor and always has a smile. Uh, this year's winner really helps the student and this teacher is the reason I have pleasant memories of school. Comments from parents included uh, that this teacher gives warmth to all the students, creates a positive environment which makes students uh, come out feeling like a winner. Uh, this teacher shares the wisdom of life. And letters from fellow teachers, uh, comments included, uh, this nominee makes learning fun for the student. Uh, this teacher has enthusiasm and expertise. Uh, they care about all of the students. They especially care for those that need some extra attention. Uh, this teacher is always volunteering. The person is the most positive person I know. They are very creative and innovative. Uh, they have high expectations of their students. Uh, the teacher is a crucial member of the faculty and takes an active leadership role in many committees. Uh, this teacher strives for new ways to present the information to the student, and this teacher also uses guest speakers to bring the real world to the classroom. And finally, this teacher keeps current with trends in technology. Comments that were made relative to her involvement in the community is she's very active in the community, she's very active in her church, and she teaches Sunday school. She currently or has served on the board of uh, Fairfield Business and Professional Women's Organization, Fairfield Public Library, Delta Kappa Gamma Business Sorority, and the Order of the Eastern Star. Besides all of this, one of the letters says she enjoys raising three children and her husband. Uh, <laughs> this year's winner, I think, really is the perfect selection uh, for those of us that are struggling with the Y2K problem. And I'd like to congratulate the 1999 Harper Brushworks Charitable Foundation Teacher of the Weird year to Diane Gowdy. Unfortunately, Diane, before you get the, uh, to claim the Teacher of the Year Award, I've got to ask you one question. Now, what was Bill Gates' answer to why the chicken crossed the road? <laughs> Give up? No, he's yes. got an answer. No, he's got an answer. He's got an answer. Got an answer. No. Okay. Uh, according to my internet source, Bill's answer was, and I quote, I have just released coupon Chicken Coop 98, which will not only cross roads, but will lay eggs, <laughs> file your important documents, bounce your checkbooks, and finally, Explorer is a critical part of the operating system, and therefore I do not have a monopoly." Unquote. Very funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, as part of the award, uh, I'd like to give you a check for $1,500. Maybe you can buy some of Bill's software, keep, Thank you. keep him in the chips. Uh, we also want to give you an award uh, for an airplane ticket anywhere in the continental U.S. And uh, the plaque that reads uh, Fairfield Community Schools Outstanding Teacher Award for 1999. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Your Windows joke was not funny. <laughs> I was going 
going to say something about the chicken going across the road to bear the Macintosh, but you know, I'm not going to say something like that. This is really an honor, and I, I'm humbled because teaching is, is difficult, and I wish, I wish I knew all the answers for all the kids, and I never do, and I never will. Oh my God, there's my family. <laughs> Hi. Hi, those are two of my daughters and my two sisters and my mom and dad from Nebraska. Oh, that's great. How they know that? That's really good. Joe, you can never keep a secret about anything. Is that why he asked me which tie should I wear tonight? I mean, it's like, I don't care what any tie you want to wear. It doesn't matter. Um, it's kind of interesting. I went to one of many things, a workshop last week, and they were talking about the three kinds of students. And I don't know why I remember this, but they were talking about the one type of student who today thinks they're in a jail and school is just a jail and they're kind of putting in time till they get released. And I thought, yeah, I got a couple of those. And then they thought, they said about the second kind of student and they said that student is the student who thinks school is the social setting of the world. It's the place to meet friends and talk with friends and do friends. And I thought, oh yeah, I've got lots and lots of those. <laughs> and then the third student said that they think school is the place where they get skills, something that can help them live from school to the next step in the world. So I was teaching seventh hour class, which is my challenging class of this year, and we were talking and finally I said, this is a problem, kids. I said, I'm a number three and I'm stuck in the room with ones and twos and I'm not changing. And so <laughs> we, we kind of had problems with that, but th th this is truly exciting. And, and you know, I became a teacher by accident, actually. I shouldn't say that, but I did. I'm a, I'm a business person. That is what I am. I was a trained business person. And it was kind of later that I decided to go into teaching. And so every year when I sign the contract, I think about it a lot because I think I don't have to be in this classroom. You know, I could go out in industry and I could probably get a data entry job or something, you know, out with the computers or something. And so I decide to sign with the commitment that I'm going to try to make a difference, but I can't always do that, and that's frustrating, but I guess I can keep trying. So thank you for however this occurred, and thank you for the many colleagues that work with me and put up with my harebrained ideas, and <laughs> I appreciate this, and thank you to my family. for coming tonight. I don't know about you, but we had a good time putting this together. A lot of people have worked to make this night happen, and thank you to those. I'd like to close tonight with just a little comment here. All of us, no matter what our job in education is, share the bond of a very unique profession. We possess the awesome responsibility and the distinct privilege of standing before our students, not only as educators, and whatever else our job is in the school, but we're also caregivers, counselors, and protectors. Do you remember that judgment day, the experience of standing before that first group of students you faced and you thought, am I ready for this? We remember that day and the sudden realization that I'm in charge. And then the question, what do I do now? At times, we were overwhelmed. At times, we still feel overwhelmed. Other times, we feel awed and at all times, busy. Many times we feel alone in our quest to give our best to our students, yet deep inside we know that we're not really alone in this job. We all share a special bond. It's this bond, our shared passion for teaching our students' lives that enable us to understand each other. 
and through this understanding, we are able to offer each other friendship, expertise, and strength. Believe it or not, we affect eternity. We never can tell where our influence stops. May you leave tonight and continue to discover that every new day gives us a fresh opportunity to find the extraordinary joy and blessings in this very unique profession. Good night and thank you for coming.